Hey everyone, thank you for joining me. So today I have the Spyderco Spidey Chef, which is a really, really cool and unique knife. And I just wanted to give a quick shout out to Ken for sending this in to get some work done on it. It's not gonna be much, but I'll get into that in just a moment. And I'm not gonna talk too much about this knife since there's plenty of videos on it, but it does have LC200N steel. So this knife would be perfect. Um, I believe it was designed for the kitchen. So that steel is perfect for that since it can handle a lot of uh, moisture. I was able to handle this knife for about a week before I actually got started on it. So I ended up really, really liking this knife. Uh, not only the steel, but the visual aspect of it. Just beautifully designed, I think. I think it just looks really, really good. Clean lines, but I do love how slender this knife is. So it fits in the hand very, very well. There are no hot spots. Uh, it does not have the original pocket clip, so I, I'm not sure if the original pocket clip would affect the ergos, but with this, I believe it's a Northwest Lynch clip. I could be wrong. And I believe it is titanium, but excellent, excellent ergos. And it just feels really, really good in hand. I definitely would like to add one of these in my collection, but overall, just a really, really great knife. The action on it is very smooth. You can use your thumb to flick it out. You can spidey flick it. There is just enough room. I mean, I don't think it's really necessary, but when you thumb flick it out or even slow roll it, it's just a very, very smooth action. There is not a steel insert for the lock bar or a over travel stop for when you're pushing the lock bar out to disengage the blade. But I mean, if you're really going extreme, then you're gonna have some issues, but it functions beautifully. And again, the lockup is just excellent. It's a solid knife. Again, love how thin it is. And it is all titanium, as you guys can see. The main reason Ken sent this in was because when it's closed, you have the tip of the blade very, very close to the outside. So when he's reaching into his pocket, he actually nicks his finger. So he gets cut every now and then, and it's completely understandable. I'm barely gliding my hand over the scales and I can feel the tip of that blade, which is, which is really interesting. I mean, Spyderco, all they had to do is knock down the tip just a little bit, but uh, let me know down below if you, if you guys have this knife, let me know if you guys have that issue because I'm, I'm curious to see if that's maybe just Ken's knife or if it's just the Spidey Chef uh, on its own. Well, basically what I'm gonna be doing is creating a titanium backspacer. And I know I've said it plenty of times, I don't like working with titanium, but since it's such a, a small piece, I believe I can create it for Ken and hopefully eliminate that issue. And he can actually pocket, pocket this knife and actually use it. So that's really the only thing I'll be changing. Maybe in the future, Ken will send it back and we can anodize it a different color or something, but I'm just going to be creating that backspacer and just make it a more pleasant knife when it's in the pocket. So let's take this thing apart and see what we're dealing with. So here is the inside, very, very simple construction. Another thing I'll, I really like about this knife, but we do have the standoffs and then you have the linear tube here. So the reason why I kept these on is because I'm basically gonna use this as a template for these three barrel spacers. And since we're done with it, let's go down to the shop and get it customized.
so the backspacer is all finished. We'll get a close look at it right now. I'm trying not to get my fingerprints on it, but here it is. I don't know if it'll pick up on the camera, but I did hit the high points with some 1000 grit sandpaper just to uh, clean it, but then also give it a two-tone anodized look to it. So you have the, the grooves of the rock pattern texture in a blue, and then the high points that I hit with the sandpaper have that bronze yellowy look to it. So you do have a nice contrast. Again, the camera won't pick it up. I'll take better pictures of it now you guys can see it. But there it is. It does function, and I did want to point out that I didn't drill three holes for the standoffs, as you guys can see right there. I just drilled a hole and then I tapped it. Now the reason for that is it was mainly this hole. It was getting so close to the perimeter of the backspacer that if I was actually to do it, then you'd be able to see it from the top view. You'd actually be able to see that hole, which I really didn't want. So I only had one shot at this and luckily it came out perfect. So the screws go in there perfectly. The only issue that we're gonna have, and I wouldn't even really call it an issue, but we got rid of one standoff. So that's really the only issue here. Uh, I'm gonna put this in a bag and send it back to Ken, but it still functions. It connects straight, or it screws straight to the backspacer. It's really solid, it'll give it a lot more strength, and it'll keep it from moving. Not that it moved before, but it'll keep the backspacer from doing any movement, especially if he drops it or anything. But that's pretty much it. That was, again, titanium is, is always a challenge to work with by hand, but it did come out exactly the way I wanted. And again, just really, really happy with it, with that bronze two-tone finish to it. So enough talking about it. Let's uh, put this thing together and see what it looks like. So here it is installed, and I think it looks really good, but the camera is just not picking it up. It's making it brighter than it should, but it is nice and dark. Again, I'm going to take some pictures, better pictures, that way you guys can get a better look at it. But there it is back there doing its thing. Again, that rock pattern texture always does that cool effect and shimmer in the light. And when it is deployed, you can actually look inside of the scales and still get that. You can actually see the, the bronze against the blue in there. It's exactly what it looks like, but even underneath, I added that texture just because why not? It always looks good in there anyway. And it's just a nice little touch. But yeah, really happy with it. As always, let me know down below what you guys think of how this thing turned out. And it wasn't, wasn't too crazy of a custom job or mod to this knife, but it does add a little, little more to it. And also, the main reason was for that blade tip to not puncture the hands anymore, or the fingertip when reaching into the pocket. As you guys can see, straight on, or let's see if I can get you guys a good angle, but that... The backspacer pops out just a hair more, and there's the tip. It vanishes, but you can still see the, the height of the backspacer. So no more finger issue and no more cuts, so that's, that's really awesome, and I hope Ken likes it. Again, i got to get one of these in my collection because this thing is sweet. Uh, personally, if it was mine, I'd probably etch and stonewash the blade, maybe make a show side scale out of some fat carbon and a custom pocket clip, but all by itself with nothing done to this knife. It's, it's really, really a nice knife. Super, super smooth action. 
and just an excellent, excellent blade shape. It's just got a nice belly to it. But that is the Spyderco Spidey Chef. And with that custom rock pattern texture titanium backspacer. So as always, guys, I thank you for watching and supporting the channel. I truly, truly appreciate it. And as always, I will see you guys on the next one.